Researchers at the University of Hong Kong have invented a new medicine for a specific type of cancer now in use in hospitals across the city. Acute promyelocytic leukemia, or APL, is a form of blood cancer with a high mortality rate. But the new medicine, known as oral ATO, is said to have a cure rate as high as 97 percent. The study's lead investigator, Dr. Harinder Gill, is in our studio to tell us more about this historic achievement for Hong Kong. So, Dr. Gill, can you tell us about how this new medicine works and how it's different from traditional treatment? All right. So, basically, in, in order to understand how this particular medicine works, it's important that we define sort of causes of various forms of blood cancers. And one important uh, cause of blood cancer is the formation of uh, specific genes or mutations all right, that lead to the cancer, that lead to the proliferation or the uncontrolled growth of cancerous cells. And what happens with oral arsenic trioxide, in short ATO, is that it binds, it goes into the cells, uh, bind to these abnormal genes or the gene fusions, all right, degrades these genes so that these cancerous cells can differentiate or go, grow back normally into their normal counterparts. I think that's the key sort of thing. And also degrades these abnormal cells that contain these abnormal genes. Uh, that's the key mechanism of action. Obviously, there are other mechanisms of action of this particular drug, oral ATO, where it actually induces a lot of stress to the cancerous cells. Uh, severe oxidative stress, all right? Uh, a lot of stress to these cells so that they would die early. Right? These are other factors that would help. So in short, it fuses to the abnormal genes, degrades them, and it also provides additional stress to these cancerous cells, inhibiting or suppressing their uncontrolled growth. Got it. So to give us a better understanding, could you tell <coughs> us a little bit more about what APL is exactly and whether this new treatment will only work on this particular type of cancer? Right. So APL so is a form of blood cancer. Right? It's a form of blood cancer. There are many forms of blood cancers depending on the type of abnormal cells that's overgrowing. Right? So APL is a form of blood cancer where there's an overgrowth of abnormal white cells in the bone marrow, and these abnormal white cells are called blasts, and they would just spill out of the bone marrow into the blood. So that's uh, a, a form of sort of acute leukemia. Acute meaning it is rapidly progressive. The patient typically would die without treatment in terms of weeks. Right? So that's an important thing about sort of acute promocytic leukemia is a form of acute leukemia. And the specific thing about this form of acute leukemia, we know the genetic basis very well. So it's an sort of uh, a, a, a translocation between chromosomes that lead to an abnormal fusion gene called PMLRARA. And that abnormal fusion gene actually drives the disease. So, and this disease, APL, is defined by the presence of this abnormal fusion gene. And the important thing is that these abnormal fusion genes are suppressed by oral arsenic trioxide. Right? It's very specific. It's very specific. Arsenic trioxide goes into the cell, binds to this abnormal fusion gene, leads to the degradation right, or the suppression of these abnormal cells, also results in the normal proliferations of these normal cellular counterparts. So that's an important thing. But we have noted that it doesn't only work all right, in APL. Right? Uh, in our current research, we are showing that this particular drug can also bind to other mutations, like uh, for TP53 gene and other forms of leukemias or in other forms of uh, uh, blood cancers like lymphomas. So it's not sort of uh, entirely specific for APL, right? but it also works in other types of cancers and also in certain other diseases like autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases are diseases where uh, the patient's own immunity attacks its own organs. So what happens is arsenic trioxide is able to suppress 
some of these immune cells called lymphocytes. It also suppresses inflammation, right? That leads to the suppression of these autoimmune disorders. Obviously, um, the use of arsenic trioxide outside APL is still under research and it's not widely clinically used. For in terms of patients, how is this new treatment a game changer for them? And do you have any sort of success stories that you can share with us? Right. So it's a very important thing. Um, the use of oral arsenic trioxide has actually transformed the treatment uh, of this once a very lethal condition to a, to a condition that can be managed entirely with an oral drug regimen. All right? And these patients could be managed in the outpatient setting without the need for prolonged hospitalizations. So uh, typically, these patients, they would come to hospital and because it's a very convenient drug, right, it can be given as soon as possible to the patient and thus uh, pay the risk of the patients dying early from the disease is significantly reduced. And secondly, patients typically would recover from the initial uh, phase of the disease within the first three weeks. And then the patients could be discharged home and subsequent treatment is just intermittent oral treatment with oral arsenic trioxide, oral ATO, and these patients would not need further admissions. And this is very important because the previous paradigm for treatment for this particular condition entailed the use of chemotherapy, also entailed the use of intravenous arsenic trioxide, which is still used in the West as a standard. And the need for infusion would mean that these patients need to be in the hospital for a prolonged period of time. Right? Typically, these patients would need to be in hospital for more than 150 days for all these infusions and so on. And in addition, uh, chemotherapy or infusions is also associated with risks, right? Risks to the other organs like the heart or the liver. So I think these are other important things. So the, the important game-changing part uh, lies with the improvement in the treatment outcome as well as the quality of life of patients. Uh, most of these patients are diagnosed in their 30s or 40s, and so they can resume their normal life pretty early, right? So typical examples that I've seen patients after completing initial treatment in the hospital, resuming work just within four weeks from diagnosing uh, APL. So that's remarkable as far as the patient's lives is concerned. I think it's not only the numbers that we are treating, but the important thing is we want to make sure patients, they resume their normal life. So I think that's an important thing. So in terms of the availability of this drug outside of Hong Kong, what <coughs> stage are we at now in terms of that? So um, oral ATO has uh, had some remarkable achievements, right? Last year, as well as early this year, right? So uh, first of all, uh, it's currently used across Hong Kong. All patients with acute promocytic leukemia would come to the University of Hong Kong treated here, and all these patients would be treated with oral arsenic trioxide. Right? It's readily available for all patients in Hong Kong. And secondly, right, we have this uh, uh, particular initiative, uh, the APL Asian Consortium. We have a consortium uh, and collaboration with different institutions across Asia and oral arsenic trioxide right, is available for clinical trial use uh, for these patients with APL outside Hong Kong, for instance, in Singapore. Right? Of obviously, we are also extending its use uh, in, to Malaysia, to Taipei, as well as, well as other Asian uh, regions. And so that's for Asia. And secondly, we got this important designation uh, the orphan drug designation from the European Medicines Agency as well as the U.S. Uh, Food and Drug Administration, FDA. We also got the investigational new drug uh, designation clearance from the U.S. FDA, meaning it's the first time uh, an, an, an oral anti-cancer treatment right, invented in Hong Kong got this designation, and that designation is essential before the drug could be used outside Hong Kong 
in North America and in Europe. So we would be starting off uh, 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 global registrational studies all right, in um, North America, US, and Europe uh, with the aim of a global dissemination of use. And we are expecting that the results of all these uh, 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 global studies uh, would read out by the end of 2027, and shortly afterwards, uh, it will be globally registered. So thank you again for joining us, Dr. Gill, and goodbye.